I've reviewed plenty of electronic saxophones on this channel, and today I've got another one for you, but as you can see, this one is very different. Now, I gotta be honest with you. At first, I was quite skeptical of this thing, maybe because it's so small and plasticky, but after playing on it for a while, well, I'll get to that in a minute. It's actually quite a marvelous idea that if it was pulled off well, would be a game changer and a unique solution to a common problem that pretty much all saxophone players have to deal with. This is the treble sax too. Yes, it has already evolved from its first iteration. And whether you're looking to get a gadget like this or not, it's still fascinating to see what is possible technologically these days. The first Travel Sax was a Kickstarter project back in 2019. At the time, the founder of Travel Sax, Ramon Manaz, said that the goal was to solve two common problems for saxophone players. Problem one, the noise of practicing the saxophone can be a huge inconvenience if you've got neighbors or housemates. And problem two, traveling with a saxophone can be another inconvenience since they're kind of big. So they set out to develop a convenient travel size tool that would allow saxophone players to practice effectively in near total silence. The Kickstarter project was a success. They launched the original travel sax, learned a bunch from that initial run, and have now redesigned the instrument and accompanying app, and that's what I'm reviewing for you here. There are a bunch of things I really like about the Travel Sax 2, and a few things I think could still be improved. Let's start with the good stuff. Small and portable, check. This thing can fit in a large pocket. It is a size and weight that you could have no excuse to not bring it with you anywhere. I've had it sitting on my desk for the past couple of weeks, and if I want to take a break from work or I'm waiting for something to upload or download, instead of picking up my phone to pass the time, I can just pick up the travel sacks and play something. It's a much better way to fill those little time gaps than getting sucked into the doom scroll. The key layout is based on a real saxophone. All of the keys are there. They even have rollers on the pinky keys as well as an adjustable thumb rest. Also, the keys actually move in the same way as a real saxophone, making it instantly familiar to your hands and fingers. The Travel Sax 2 now uses these stainless steel springs on the keys, which is great. I found that the action on mine was a bit stiff, so I popped the keys off one by one and adjusted the spring tension. I don't recommend doing this yourself since you could potentially mess up your instrument, but in my case, I did manage to lighten the key action and that did improve the playing experience for me quite a bit. Please take a moment right now to click that like button if you appreciate saxophone gadget review videos like this one, and we would love to count you amongst our over 315,000 subscribers if you aren't already. You see, they've reduced the saxophone key layout to something the size of like a Sopranino saxophone, but it still works fine as you'd expect. I've played some rather long sessions on this and haven't felt any discomfort. As you can see, I have added these extensions because it just feels more natural and comfortable to me having the Travel Sax 2 a bit further away from my face. You can put a real saxophone mouthpiece on this thing, just like the Emeo or the Yamaha YDS-150. I prefer to play it just blowing into the tube though. I personally don't see any point in putting a real saxophone mouthpiece on one of these instruments since you can't learn anything about embouchure or tone production from doing so. In fact, I feel that using a real mouthpiece on one of these could result in you developing some bad embouchure habits that you may end up carrying over to the real thing. When playing with just the tube, articulation is very responsive. It's similar to articulating on a flute where you just touch the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth. They offer an accessory kit that includes this extension as well as a curved neck and a mouthpiece with a smaller opening to make articulation even easier. Having the instrument a bit further away from your face is a lot more comfortable, I find. The fact that the Travel Sax 2 has its own internal sounds makes it an instrument that you could just pick up and start playing at any moment. 
Now these sounds are basic MIDI. They do not sound very good, but it's a necessary trade-off that I'm okay with. These basic sounds allow the Travel Sax 2 to be lighter and less expensive. If you want fancier sounds, you can have those as well. You just gotta plug it into a computer or a tablet or even a smartphone and use software. I love that you can play audio via Bluetooth that'll come out of the external speaker or the headphones. This way you can play along with recordings, play along with backing tracks. It's a great way to practice learning tunes or transcribing solos on the go, or even just practicing playing over chord changes. Here I'm playing over a backing track from bettertracks.com. You can plug in headphones or have the sound come out of the external speaker. There's also a mini jack input for audio. The Travel Sax 2 is set up to match the fingerings of a normal saxophone, but you could change those in the app if you need to, and you could also program your own altissimo fingerings. One thing I like to use this for is practicing my ear training. I could put it into automatic mode, which means the notes will play with just moving my fingers. I don't have to blow in it this way. I can sing and play at the same time. This is a fantastic way to practice playing what you're hearing in your head. <laughs> Got that one wrong. <laughs> when judging any instrument, my most important criteria is is it fun to play? Does the instrument make me want to continue playing music or do I get frustrated? Am I fighting with it and do I want to stop? Once I adjusted the spring tension on this and figured out how the app worked and everything, I started to really enjoy working with the Travel Sax too. Not in the same way I enjoy playing a real saxophone, of course. I mean, this thing looks like a toy, right? But I think that toy-like nature is part of the appeal, it's so small and cute and plasticky. Even though it is built entirely out of 3D printed plastic, it doesn't feel cheap or flimsy. Now let's talk about the areas I think can be improved. While the key response is much improved compared to the original travel sax, I think they could go even further in this area. Everything works pretty well, but I'm curious as to how well it's gonna hold up over years of the repetitive motion since it is all plastic. But because it is all 3D printed, getting replacement parts would probably be pretty easy. Now there is quite a bit of key noise, as you may have noticed. If you were playing this with the headphones on in a room with another person, it would probably sound pretty annoying. It's like a really loud keyboard typing. Now, I think they can improve both of these things by just adding a little bit of a cushion where the key touches the body of the instrument. This could both make it feel a little bit more like the touch of a real saxophone, as well as reducing that noise. Now, this one is a little nitpicky. I would like to see them add an auto off feature. I've already picked it up and the battery's been dead a few times because I forgot to turn it off. So who is the Travel Sax 2 for? You may have seen some of my other reviews of the various wind synths out there. And if you're considering getting an instrument like this, check those out to get the full picture of what's available. But here's my quick assessment. The Travel Sax 2 is the right choice for anyone who wants an instrument that mimics the key layout of a real saxophone, but is small enough and light enough to take with you anywhere. It's for somebody who isn't particularly bothered about the quality of the sounds. They just want to hear something when they play it. This is by far the smallest and most convenient option meeting those criteria. If, on the other hand, you're looking for a performance instrument, you might be better off going with an Akai Iwi or a Roland Aerophone. If you want something that feels more like a real saxophone, is more responsive, and you don't mind it being bigger, heavier, and more expensive, you should check out the Emio. Travel Sax 2 is perfect for the person who wants to practice 
while traveling, in the hotel room, maybe on a break at work, stuff like that. It's actually small enough that you wouldn't look weirder than those people sucking on those vape things if you were to play this in public with the added benefit of being allowed on public transportation. I believe that this instrument will make a lot of people quite happy, and it does solve those problems it set out to solve in its own unique way. So I can recommend it with confidence. The current price is 649 euros, but if you want colored keys, you have to spend a little bit more. They gave me a green one, but I would have chosen the blue or red as those look pretty slick. Full disclosure time, I did not pay for this instrument. It was provided to me by Odyssey, the company who makes the Travel Sacks 2. They did not see this video before it was published, nor did they have any input whatsoever into the content of this video. These are my words. Now, I did manage to get them to offer a bonus to Better Sax subscribers, as I always try to do. I find that this extension kit of accessories makes a real big difference. So if you add both of these to your cart and use the coupon code BETTERSAX TS2, the extension kit, 45 euro value, will be free. If you do use that code and make a purchase, Better Sax will receive a small commission, which helps us make more content like this for you. So don't forget it, I put a link in the description. Now, while the Travel Sax 2 is a pretty nifty gadget, there is another Robo Sax out there that I quite like called the Emio. I made a review of that one. You can watch it here next.